What is going on everybody, Nazdarachi coming back at you again today for another Dragon Ball Legends video and we will be discussing of course the management letter that we got today from Toshi as opposed to their more recognized video and stuff format that we've seen recently. I guess they didn't want to get a whole production team together to put a video up, so we got, again, a letter format. We'll be going over that today. I know Goresh already put out a video talking about this, but I perhaps can provide some additional insights and alternate perspectives, even though we generally almost always agree and say the same stuff in a lot of cases. I normally don't even watch his videos before I make my own, because I'm always worried that someone will come out and be like, you just watched his video and copied him. No, a lot of the stuff is just kind of common sense ideas that I guess, well, it seems common to folks like myself and Goresh and it may not be all that common for developers who just look into the world with dollar signs in their eyes. I don't know, but that's what we'll be covering today. In addition to a brief opinion from me about the PyCon and Kaoken Goku, Super Saiyan, Full power KO can Goku, whatnot. Um, it's bad. It's terrible. I invested no Chrono Crystals in it whatsoever, other than what the two or three daily summons that have been made available so far. It really feels like kind of a filler banner. Like everyone just kind of dumped in hard on Vegito Blue on those two, you know, future and GT theme banners. And they're already hitting us with some like simmer down content, even though it's labeled as like part two for the anniversary. I'm not a huge fan of that, but again, I didn't give Vegito Blue, so I didn't have too many extra resources to spend on it anyway, so maybe it's a good thing, but just very quickly, as a budget or free-to-play player, you're probably going to want to just hard pass, avoid this banner, and moving forward, things how they've now restructured a lot of the Zenkai stuff, which we're about to go over, and there's just, again, lots of questions about where to summon, where not to summon. Again, as a free-to-play or budget player, it's very important that you kind of examine the teams that you already have, the strengths that you are able to acquire just via pulling on banners of characters you really like, or in other situations where you know it's going to benefit your current setup. You're going to have to stick to budgeting and planning like that. You're not going to be able to summon on every single banner across the board. It's really just about what's going to be most competitive for you and the characters that you personally really like. Of course, the premium players, the investing whale community, they're going to be able to run every single team at full capacity, full power. And that's just not something that everyone's going to have as an available option. That's unfortunately something that's very consistent across many of these free to play and gotcha related competitive games. That's how they kind of get, you know, the spending community to kind of be convincing the non-spending community to try and fork over some dollars by, you know, hitting it where it counts in the competitive department. When you go up against those people and they have just overwhelming power, there's a psychological aspect to that that will make you then want to potentially spend money as well or just get angry. It's usually going to be one of those two responses. But with that being said, that is unfortunately how certain aspects of this game are always going to work. So if you are more budget player, again, just kind of skip around and summon where it benefits you the most and for, for characters you really like as well. And again, save and budget accordingly. Now for everyone else that can spend money, I just kind of wasted a three or four minutes of your time there because you can just go all out on every banner and get your your collector's needs satiated with that. And don't let me you know sound judgmental at all. It's your money. You spend it exactly how you want to. You freaking earned it, man. You know, or woman, or whoever you are. You just that's how it is. So moving past that, we can jump into that letter itself from the management from Toshi, who is our direct point of contact between the community to ourselves you know he's our he's our one kind of source that leads into the minds of the developers and what all they have going on so again from the bottom of the letter you'll see that it is from our good pal Toshi who gets a lot more flack than he deserves again he's just kind of a voice he's said a lot of things which are in favor of the players and it's very likely that just he has some corporate overlords above him that pull strings that he might not always want to be you know a part of but it's just how the again the cookie crumbles when you're running a business 
So starting off, news. The Legends Management Team newsletter. Thank you for your continued support of Dragon Ball Legends. This time, the newest information on adjustments and updates comes to you in the form of this letter. Be sure to read till the end. That's basically what we covered. They just they didn't want to make a video out of this. It was just easier for them to get this information out this way, which is fine. I, you know, I don't mind this all the time. Not every update needs to have a video made about it. If it's easier to communicate sometimes this way, then so be it. It's better than not getting any information at all. So the first thing we're going to start with is the changes to the Zenkai Awakening summons. For characters whose Zenkai Awakenings are newly released from July 2020 and onward, the amount of Awakening Z power that drops from their designated Zenkai Awakening summons will be adjusted to make it easier to raise Awakening ranks. Everything about that statement at inherent face value is good. There's going to be some good things about this update coming and some bad things. So this part is good. There's no problem so far. Characters Zenkai Awakening conditions will not change, meaning they will still need to be seven stars. That's not really a net loss or gain. It's just, again, it won't change. But the amount of Chrono Crystals required for climbing the ranks of the Awakening tiers will be greatly reduced. So again, that is good news. We've kind of done the math out, and you know, if you're extremely lucky, you could probably get full Zenkai 7 in like six to seven thousand Chrono Crystals. If you're extremely lucky, you could probably get it in less, but it requires some real mathematical daredevil feats. We'll go over that in a second. But generally, about six to eight thousand Chrono Crystals is gonna be the lucky range up to about 10 to 11,000 being the unlucky range of, of 10,000 crystals you'd have to spend, as opposed to it being about 20,000 Chrono Crystals previously in the past. So roughly, they've cut the value of you know our investment in half, which is a great thing. But again, there's gonna be a couple of negative downsides to that. First off, please note that Zen Kai Awakening Summons released up until now will not be changed until November of 2020. It's so like four to five months potentially until Iberus, Goku Black, the Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, Cooler, the Red Super Saiyan Goku, all those original Zenkai units that we have up until right now, those summons won't be changing until November 2020. Now, Goresh went into depth with this, saying it's not really a good idea for them to have told us this because now the value of summoning on that banner has been completely ruined. There's no reason to summon for them, knowing that the value is going to be much better waiting till November. I feel like they told us this because the Zenkai banner schedule moving forward probably won't have them recycle too many times because now that we know and they know we know I mean they might throw it out every once in a while just to try and bait people who don't pay too much attention but again I, I suspect they're telling us this because they don't plan on cycling them back through for a, a little bit maybe they're gonna focus on new things maybe they have something else in mind and or maybe they will cycle back through and just be full value but for the love of God don't summon on them until they've moved to the updated format. So that's one piece of questionable news right there. It really remains to be seen what they intend to do in the meantime while we're waiting. So what are the actual changes coming to the system? We'll go over what it is right now, which is the left side, and then we can tackle what it will be in the future on the right side. So as of right now, there is no single summon for any type of Zenkai related activities, and your consecutive summon does cost you 300 Chrono Crystals. Your odds of getting 70 Z power are about the same as pulling a individual sparking unit that you desire on a banner, about 1% odds, or in many cases, getting like a like a rando Legends Limited unit on you know banners that are like celebratory banners. So very rare that you would see the 70 at a 1% odds, but occasionally it would happen. And I think I've seen it twice in like two different Zenkai summons that I've made. 30 Z power, you'd see a little bit more frequently. 15 Z power, you'd see even more frequently, but not too often. And the majority of the time, you'd see stacks of five, which were really kind of like an insulting slap to the face. Again, totaling out for, on average, needing about 20,000 Chrono Crystals to get a unit all the way to Z7. There were no freebies whatsoever for making any type of summons on Zenkai. Moving forward in the future, starting from 7-1-2020, which will be the red trunks that's up and coming, 
you will get a single summon chance for 100 Chrono Crystals, and they're upping the price to 1,000 Chrono Crystals. So the same as a consecutive summon on a regular banner, you'll have to, again, debate what's best for your team, summoning on Zenkai or summoning for new characters. Obviously, like right now, and PyCon and the Super Saiyan Kaioken Goku are a highlight. Zenkai a character would be a great idea. And then when hype banners like the Majin 21 or Kefla or banners like the, the, the anniversary banners, which are still around, but when banners like those are popping off, you may consider going for the new characters. And then if they, you know, hopefully they will balance it where it won't be too overwhelming for more budget-based players. But you can earn between seven to 11,000 Chrono Crystals a month for free based off events, PVP competitiveness, different things like that, to just daily logins, missions. So you, you'll just, again, you'll have to decide where your budget's gonna lie for that month or for time or how much money you're gonna spend because you will be able to do this much cheaper than before, which will make it much more enticing. There's a very, very low 0.1% chance you get a stack of 1,500. So, you know, I'm just waiting for Twitter to show up with the image of the first person that gets like two or three of these in a single summon. I know it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when, not if. So I'll be seeing that gloat post coming at some point. Then you'll have a Legends Limited chance of pulling 500 Awakening Z Power. On average, you'll be pulling most of your stacks at 100 Z Power, which you get 10 stacks per multi. If you got all of them at 100, that's one Zenkai level per multi summon. If you're lucky enough to not get any of the 27% stacks of 70, which likely you will get a few of these. Now, of course, when you multi summon, they are also giving a gift of 100 of the Target Awakening Z Power, which will cover for like one bad stack of 70. Because you'll be getting basically 11 stacks total, one of them is guaranteed 100. And again, that'll cover for one bad drop, but you know, beyond that, you'll have to make more than one multi summon per Zenkai tier, which is why I gave that range of like, you know, five to six thousand if you're extremely lucky, up to like ten to eleven thousand if you happen to be a little bit less lucky. So that's that's probably what the range is going to be, which again is a huge improvement over what it is now. So that's all good news. You know, they still are finding a way to monetize this system, which is unfortunate, but it's 50% less painful than what it was before. So we can't complain too much. They could have just left it and it could have just stayed a nightmare forever. Other changes. This is a little bit of unfortunate news right here. So characters that acquire Zenkai Awakening from this date moving forwards will no longer get Zenkai Awakening missions you know, after this update. So that means there'll be no Friendship 10 nonsense, no using the characters X amount of times and different teams to then get that Zenkai level one for free. That is completely going bye-bye. No completely free Zenkai level one. Now, with that being said, Again, there's still plenty of ways to earn free Chrono Crystals in the game. You could do a, a challenge rush, or what is it, Ultra Space Time Rush, twice, two sets of it after it resets, you'll have a thousand Chrono Crystals, then you can get potentially a Zenkai 1 character for free by summoning. So, it is unfortunate that we're losing the missions. I do think that they should have kept them around, maybe reformatted them, but hopefully, they will be able to take like the developmental time it took to structure out all these different missions for all these different characters and put them into the game and have that just space in the game for them. Hopefully they can take all those resources and time related to that and put it into something else that's beneficial to us, like different missions or different enhancements to actually playing the game via, I don't know, rewards or benefits, something. But again, it is unfortunate that we are losing those Zenkai missions for the free Z1. But the overall changes are still a net positive, even with the negative aspect like that right there. There will be no changes to event characters, Zenkai Awakening Summons. That's like the Kid Goku and the Blue Trunks right now. They'll still have their tickets aspect and the co-op grind and however they decide to structure that out. Basically, those free-to-play characters won't be changing at all. In addition, as of the next update on 701, the highly requested Super Saiyan Trunks teen will finally be Zenkai Awakened. He'll gain additional defensive capabilities as well as offensive bonuses against Lineage of Evil and Frieza Force. 
awaken him as an indispensable character to any hybrid Saiyan party. Now there are some downsides to this as well as some, you know, upsides. The downsides being they waited entirely too long to do this. Unfortunately, it seems their turnaround time from seeing community requests and surveys, complaints and issues on social media to actually implementing stuff in the game, it's a pretty big window of time, which again is a little unfortunate because Vegito Blue will probably still smack cheeks on this trunks right here, just literally just and he's gone. Assuming you build a decent team with that in mind and you're able to actually contain the Vegito Blue, then this Trunks will probably still have a good bit of value. I mean, hybrids definitely can use all the help they can get trying to get back up into a relevant spot. So, again, if you're able to contain Vegito Blue, I'm sure this Trunks will be a valuable addition to your teams. But it is kind of an issue that red right now is a little bit of an underdog color because the single best unit in the game is blue. Other adjustments to obtaining Zenkai Souls. This is all good news. Recycle Center Exchange Shop will be established mid-July to make it easier to obtain Zenkai Souls necessary for Zenkai Awakening Boost Panels. You can basically exchange regular Rising Souls and Super Souls for Zenkai Souls. And they'll be making it possible to exchange Z-Metals for Zenkai Souls in the near future as well. All good changes and makes them accessible outside of only playing co-op to get the adventures and the tokens to exchange in that way. And uh, yeah, so nothing bad to say about that. This is pretty much all good news. The Z-Metals right now are pretty only useful for that Friendship EXP piece of equipment, which is now again not like what is going on actually the friendship system existed for the past few months to zenkai characters i mean you need friendship one to teach shallot the moves but beyond that you get to zenkai 10 for the zenkai missions now the zenkai missions are gone what is the value of this friendship piece of equipment i don't do i don't know what's going on with the friendship system right now because of all this but the z medals right now are not really useful for anything other than adventure slots 6 and 7. So it's good that they'll be adding more ways to spend those on stuff of value instead of just infinitely stacking them up with nothing to use them on. Separate from Zenkai Awakening updates mentioned above, they're also planning the 2.90 update implemented soon. There's basically other quality of life improvements and UI improvements speeding up the transition to the guild screen, speeding up the exchange connection when purchasing things from the exchange shop, Combining returning notifications for adventures and adding the option to consecutively run the same job request when one finishes. All good UI and quality of life features to just speed up and freshen up the experience of actually interacting with the game. Assisto bot notification will be sent when it's possible to claim items. I guess that's great for those people that purchase that. Adding the amount of souls, medals, other exchange items in possession to the detailed dialog box. Ordering characters by card number instead of randomly in the character list. And this is all just kind of irrelevant stuff, but hopefully it'll help out a little bit. And yeah, that's that. All quality of life stuff there. Moving forward, we've seen this announcement many times before. Hopefully they are actually working on it and planning to act on it. Regarding dishonest acts in PvP, they are very well aware of the dishonest activity occurring within rating match rankings. We are also currently looking into technology that could punish users who have broken our terms of service more accurately and are taking measures to remove those who use unfair means in ranking. This will be the people that just illegitimately gain points or you play against them and they lose and they gain points even if they lose or they're disconnect cheating using insta win mods, hacks, all of that stuff. They apparently are well aware that we've been shouting at them about this for a while. They're not going to tell us what this technology is or what their methods are going to be because that would completely defeat the purpose of them getting into it because then the hackers would just be able to circumnavigate them. So we just kind of have to trust on good faith that they are actually making moves in this direction. It's been pretty slow progress so far, but hopefully they're telling the truth. That's about all I can say about that. We are also looking into measures to implement during 2.9.0's update maintenance. We do not condone the use of unauthorized means to rise in the rankings. We understand the outrage it has brought among players. We will continue to try our best to create a fair environment. I think the biggest issue they could possibly tackle, which would make this feel much less painful, is if they did something 
to address this during the season instead of after every season. Like, yes, we do see that after every season, most, not all, but most of the cheaters are appropriately punished. Some of them slip through the cracks and hopefully they'll get caught up with later. But that still doesn't alleviate the issue of having to suffer through them cheating through the entire season, which makes the game that much more frustrating and unbearable at times to actually play. So if they can find a way to address it like while it's happening instead of like after the fact, a little bit of like minority report type stuff going on, maybe. I know that sounds kind of crappy, but honestly, there's not too many people cheating that'll be affected and hopefully it'll be accurate enough to not accidentally punish the wrong people. So hopefully we can put some faith into them that they are again actually doing something here. Aside from dishonest acts in PvP, there's also the matter of disconnections. Since PvP is performed over peer-to-peer -peer connections without going through a game server, as all fighting games throughout the world, every single one of them, that's, this is how they all are, they're all peer-to-peer. -peer. Since it's like that and it's in the hands of connection compatibility or a mobile connection, it is difficult to address or eliminate players from ranking based on the reports of lag or disconnection. That's perfectly understandable. I don't want to eliminate someone from rankings just because they're lagging, provided they're not doing it on purpose. I just want better net code and a better way, a better system. Which it says, for this reason, we're looking into optimizing the battle data exchange and matching logistics in a mid to long term approach. Which means we probably shouldn't be expecting it anytime too immediately soon. However, I hope that they are successful in their attempts at just improving connectivity. Again, we're not talking about cheaters here. Like, I could be playing someone in California. I'm on the East Coast in Virginia. Hopefully, they find a way to just improve that connection. It's a lot of distance between the players. And not necessarily either one of them are cheating. But I still want to have a quality experience in those situations as well. So... Don't want those people banned, it's not necessarily their fault. The matchmaking system just kind of stinks. And that's again, something that hopefully they can address. And hopefully they can change the way that we queue into battle. Maybe add like a, do you want to queue against this person? Yes, no, and show their ping with like a connection meter. And maybe that's it. You don't have to show their teams or their skill, you know, their points or anything. And then it's just kind of like co-op almost. You get a limited amount of information, you make a yes, no choice and then you go into battle from there. Basically like Dragon Ball Fighters. If they emulated that, it would really be perfect. So hopefully, again, we just have to have a lot of faith and put some trust in them because they're not gonna give us too much information about the specifics here because then that would just undermine what they do to get rid of cheaters. Multi-Z power. We plan on expanding the multi-Z powers obtainable by events by setting different limits, one to three star and four to six star upper limits in the next update. Also, the Legends Limited Multi-Z powers from the previous announcement are still in development. It's two different pills to swallow here. Expanding is fine. If there's more options than what we currently have, that's fine. But if more options, expanding means they're getting rid of the older options, like just general Z powers that work for, you know, potentially red starring units and stuff like that, then I'm not entirely sure if this is good or bad. They said expanding, so I'm gonna again have some faith that it's gonna be a better system, but hopefully they also expand my ability to hold them because I, it's so confusing the system and then you can only hold X amount of so many, keeping track of all the characters I have, which ones I need to buy, it's a little bit frustrating. So I do hope they do clean up the multi Z power system a little bit and I'm not gonna hold my breath on this. They mentioned this like five to six months ago that Legends Limited Multi-Z powers from the previous announcement are still in development. I fully expect that to be something premium, like this Super Chrono Crystal or something like that. I will jump for joy if there is a way to earn them, but at least initially, I'm sure they're gonna be hidden behind a price tag. So I'm, I'm again, I'm not gonna hold my breath for any excitement on that. And finally, second anniversary events are still ongoing. Soon an event similar to last year's popular celebratory Sizzling Summer Boot Camp where you can get new extreme characters for free before they appear in summons is set to go live. This is very good news. Hopefully, like the Ginyu Force, which was a very relevant team and hyper competitive for a long, long time, even if not still right now, if you have to mix a couple of sparkings in the mix, you know, cover for maybe Guldo or, or Geese or something like that, 
it's still, this is really good. I hope they focus something around the Z Warriors, like Roshi, Tien, Yamcha, Chatsu, Piccolo, Krillin. I think that would be really great. Or even like EX Goku, get the whole team in there. Let's do an EX Z Warriors squad. I think that would be amazing. If not them, then maybe we could do like Cooler's team or if Bojack squad already has EXs, Shadow Dragons kind of already has some EX team kind of set up going on already. But let's get something in there that's a little bit wonky and weird and really neat that the community would really get behind. Who will rise to the task to defend the Earth? That kind of implies that it is going to be good guys since we're talking about defending the Earth. That's a nice little hint there. So hopefully it is Z Warrior Squad. Thanks to all of our users, Dragon Ball Legends reach a second anniversary. From here on out, we will face the rest of 2020 and work towards getting ready for the third anniversary. We hope to release more videos and stuff about development and detailed information on upcoming events and content. And we hope for your continued support. I haven't been playing the game or supporting it too much recently because it's a little bit salty. I didn't get Vegito Blue and as well, the game experience has been very samey recently. But I have no plans on quitting playing the game. I, games like this can have their ups and downs. And while it might be a little bit down right now for some people and up for others, that can always change. So I'm in it for the long haul. I look forward to what they have in the works. And I still might be expanding the you know games I'm covering on YouTube because not all the time can I just play this one game and enjoy it. But I do hope that they swing things back around in favor of a more positive experience overall. And that's about it for that management letter. We kind of covered everything on there. Hopefully, I provided you with enough information to make it a little bit different than other videos you may have seen on the same topic. And let me know down below in the comments whether you agree or disagree with the points that I've made here, what your points are of agreement, disagreement might be with that letter, and what your general opinions on the game overall right now are. I'd love to hear all that information down in the comments. Let me know what your luck has been on summoning recently and anything else you feel free to tell me. I'd love to hear it. So definitely comment down below. If you enjoy the video, consider leaving it a thumbs up. Help spread it out so more people can see it. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell so I can see you again on future videos. I do hope that every one of y'all has a great evening and we'll be talking to you again real soon. Peace out, y'all.